so in there, um, you had made mention of something, and it just kind of sparked something for me, where um, I always hear this quote where you can't be faith-filled and then have fear at the same time. Mm. Oh, yes. How do you feel about that? I like that. Mm. I like that a lot. You know. <clears throat> we see that in David. Yeah. You know, back to David, we just we said he was full of faith in front of Goliath. He was full of faith whenever he stood up against the bear and the and the cat, you know, the mountain lion. Yeah. Um, he was full of faith whenever he would pray to God to work through him to lead the people. You know, um, he actually had faith in God whenever he fell, not fell out of favor, because never fell out of favor, but whenever he committed sin against God, he still had faith in God. Mm. And he was like, let me give myself up to you. Mm. Because, yes, you're a living God, and it's a terrible thing to fall in hands of a living God. And that doesn't mean that God won't have mercy. That means that mm. God is a real person, mm. if you want to put it that way. If you're, you know, worshiping Buddha, no offense, um, but you're you're talking to a stone, a piece of marble, a piece of jade, a, a wooden carving. It's a, cre- it's a creation that's made by another creation of God. Mm. But if you fall, and if let's say that you know you smack Buddha on the head, you know it falls on the ground, it breaks. If it's 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 an it's an inanimate object, mm-hmm. you know, it's not alive. God is alive, mm-hmm. so mm. he has the power to do whatever he wants. And if you're on the bad side of God, there's plenty of examples of what happens in the Bible. But the point is that, like you said, you can't be fearful and full of faith. It doesn't exist, you know? Yeah. Man, I, I guess that I only bring that up, man, because, you know, later on, I forget um, which book it was in, but a man's son or daughter had died, um, and Jesus was walking amongst the town people, and uh, I don't know if he was carrying the body or if the, the body was still laid up in the house, but... He came to Jesus and said, "You know, can you can you heal my child? My mm. child has passed. Can you, would you be willing to heal my child?" And um, you know, Jesus said, "Well, do you believe that I can do it?" Uh, and the guy says, "You know, I believe, um, but heal my unbelief." Mm. So you know, he wanted to truly believe a hundred percent that God would come through to be able to you know resurrect this child, but. There was those aspects of him, you know, personally that, uh, well, you know, some of the stories that I've heard, they don't always make sense. You know, how is it that you were able to split this one loaf of bread and feed 10,000 people? That yeah, doesn't make yeah. sense to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, so in the logical mind, it's like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, I think that that's the, where we end up, you know, um, being stuck as, you know, just human beings. You try to go about in. something. Yeah, exactly. Does you it know? make sense? Yeah, exactly. So as opposed to being able to, you know, tangibly, if I'm holding a pen and then I split this thing, it's like, is it going to work? Like, yeah, for a little bit, sure, whatever. <laughs> you know, but after that ink runs out, it's unlogical or, um, you know, unfathomable for you to go about being able to continue writing with this pen, even though it doesn't have ink in it. But mm. if God is saying yeah, it's possible, yeah, go ahead and write with that pen that doesn't have ink. It's like, what? Okay, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, now you're full of faith type deal. Mm. You know, but I think in those instances, it really just reflects what the interaction between like a, a regular person is as opposed to that person that is filled with that spirit of David, you know, that is after God's own heart. So you compare the two. And where David can say, um, you know, uh, I stand against you. Uh, you know, backed by my God, you know, everybody else is on this other end where it's like, I believe, but heal my unbelief. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with mm. that. Mm. You're actually going about pursuing, you know, a relationship with God. And I don't think that you can condemn either or. Yeah. You know, I think that's <clears throat> remarkable. I think that is a beautiful place to be. Mm-hmm. If you're, if that's your prayer to God, mm-hmm. it's just like, heal my I, unbelief. I be- heal my unbelief. Mm-hmm. I believe in you. Mm hmm. But the rest of this stuff, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, that goes against physics, that goes against climate change, that goes yeah. against all this right. other nonsense. Exactly. So, um, heal my unbelief. And if you're, if you're there, I think that's a beautiful place to be. Mm-hmm. Because, like, that means, to me, in my understanding, right, like, you're a baby in mm-hmm. the gospel, you know? Mm-hmm. You're, you finally 
you, you finally accepted Jesus as your savior, right? So mm-hmm. you're new, you're fresh, right? And you're in this beautiful, humble place for you to, for you to recognize, internalize and say, I believe in you, but I don't believe everything mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. I want to. Mm-hmm. Show me your glory. Absolutely. Show me yes. the miracles. Yes. You know, Absolutely. show me your hand. Show me your power. Mm. Show me your majesty. Mm. You know, that that's a dangerous prayer really? because when God does it and He shows you, yeah. Yeah. you better be ready. Yeah. Exactly, because there's things that you're gonna see and experience and feel that, like, you know, you're gonna be like, there's no such thing as a coincidence anymore. Yeah. Mm. You know, because after yes. so many quote unquote coincidences, yeah. at one point you're going to be like, "There's got to be someone, yeah. something greater at hand." Because Absolutely, this does not make sense. Absolutely, Dude, I'm telling you. When it comes to the miracles in the Bible, that's like my biggest argument against mm-hmm. people that say, "Well, you know, let's say the Red Sea, right? Mm-hmm. It parted. Oh, well, you know, where they crossed, it's supposed to be skinnier, and yeah. at the certain part of yeah, the year, the it like wild. runs dry or yeah. runs like less, so you can walk through it or something like that. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, hmm. right? So you're telling me that this man with this imaginary god that doesn't exist, right? They're co- they're communicating or talking to each other which doesn't happen, right? This guy's just crazy. Mm. He just happens to be at the right place at the right time at the, at the, at the time where he need, with these people really need to get past this, this sea. And it all just, and it all just happened at the, at the perfect time. (laughs) No, that's show me the, show me the statistics, my man. (laughs) Show me the statistics. (laughs) Another one is the, um, the, the prophet when he's, um, um, uh, in a rivalry against the other false prophets of Baal. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he he says, all right, we're going to make an altar here, and then whosoever's God is real will rain fire down from heaven and mm. ignite this altar, yeah. right? And so you have the, the false prophets, right? The witches, the mm. warlocks, the wizards, whatever. And they're over here lacerating themselves and chanting and doing weird dances and being naked and whatever. And... Over here, you have the prophet. Was that Samuel? No. Isaiah? I can't remember. Anyways, you have the prophet. And then he's over here laughing and just like, oh, you know, scream louder so your God can hear you, you know? (laughs) So long story. Just a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Try your throat. That one's a great spot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so long story short, he gets up on the altar and he, he makes the pot even yummier, you know, because he takes water on this wooden altar and just dumps water until it's drenched, right? Mm. And then he prays to God, you know, God of Abraham, Isaac, and, you know, and, um, you know, sh- rain, light this fire, rain God, rain fire from heaven so that these people can see that you are the one and only true God. Mm. And boom, fire from heaven comes, consumes everything, even the water. It was dry, yeah. oh, you know? <laughs> and so part of, and part of the the wager was that, uh, if he won, the the wizards all die. They all yeah. get decapitated, right? Um, but anyways, you're going to tell me that's a coincidence? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to tell me that was just the guy was at the right time, said the right words, and he just, he didn't know if it was going to happen. It just, oh, I got lucky. Mm. You know, like, nah, yeah. get out of here. Absolutely. Stop it. Let's see. And I guess it's. It's unfathomable of until it happens in your life, right? The things that you Mm -hmm. counted. It might not be one of those, you know, moments that they were seeing in the past where, you know, this altar is lit on fire Mm -hmm. or otherwise. But it's something that, you know, a doctor tells you, it's like, hey, that can't happen for you. Mm -hmm. And then it happens for you. There you go. You know what I mean? Um, So the the Mm -hmm. things that, you know, are not tangible to us just because we can't see them. Mm. I think that those are the truest expressions of faith now. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Just yeah. like I said earlier, the, you really see God's will in hindsight, you know, mm-hmm. when you look back. And it's all in the timing. Mm-hmm. God is a master uh, architect, you know. He, his, his ability to design everything to the millisecond mm-hmm. is, is just, you can't fathom it, right? Like our little human brains can't understand that. When he created everything, right? Let's just say, you know, he did it in the manner of a Big Bang, right? Let's just say he did it in the manner of a Big Bang. In that moment, he already set 
some weird little comet to go around the universe. Mm-hmm. And at something, something BC, yep. it would come and rain down and, and hit the, the thing, right? Exactly. Or, you know, you are, you know, you just, you just lost your job and you can't pay bills and what are you going to do? And then someone calls you, hey, you do this and that, right? Yeah. Oh, come on. Help yeah. me out. Yeah. I got some money for you. Exactly. It's like... And then it's the exact amount that you yeah, need. Yeah, and it's the exact <laughs> amount that you need. And exactly. I'm just like, now it's a miracle. That's a modern day miracle. Exactly. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, sure. you know, you're just... There's so much in, in the small details of life that we don't realize that God set in motion since the day of creation. Mm-hmm. You know? So... Yeah. Absolutely, man. Let me see. And I, when it all lines and finally works out and you see that miracle, you experience that... If you're a believer, it, it should strengthen your faith. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you're not, you're like, oh, I got lucky. Yeah. Mm. And that's like, oh, you missed the point, man. Yeah, yeah, you missed yeah. the point. You missed Absolutely. the mark. Yeah. You yeah. didn't get lucky. There is no luck. Exactly. Yeah. There is no luck. Yeah, man. You know, there right. is no coincidence. No, not at all. You're man. just at that point. You're just choosing not to see. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. I think it's awe striking, right? Where um, we are essentially utilized to go about, you know, furthering just the word of God. So where I might be struggling with money, right? And then you guys come into uh, my life and it's just like, you know, you said, Alfredo, oh, I I got this, uh, you know, job that you might be able to do. I I could pay you, you know, whatever it is that you need. And that kind of stuff happens. But that kind of stuff was happening in the biblical days as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where the individual that was not supposed to be healed, you know, um, sitting by a fountain for 30 plus years, legs mangled and all this other craziness. And Jesus comes by and says, hey, take up your mat and walk. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you don't really think about everything that goes behind that. And I'm only getting this story from um, a past that I, I watch, you know, throughout the week. And it was like, you know, the first time that this person was ever using their legs. You know, it it doesn't really say whether or not the person was crippled, like, after a time or what. But after, you know, 32 years, this person is having to stand up. The bones are setting back into place and all this stuff. So I could imagine it was painful, Mm -hmm. you know. And then you go to stand up, having to use muscles and such that you have never used before. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and then after that, you have to bend back down and pick up the mat that you've been laying on for years. And then start walking. You know, amongst people that had seen you. That's a heavy task. You know, mm-hmm. exactly. And I think that that is just, you know, amazing. Because you really think about how that ends up interacting with the modern day person. Right? There, there's so many things that we don't know are possible. And I think that God ends up using people to go about furthering his agenda. Right? Where um, the struggle for men and women with infertility. Right? Uh, they have studies going on right now that it's like a skin scrape where they might be able to take like the skin cells and whatnot and develop those into um, formidable cells. Wow. Yeah. And they said, you know, within like the next five to 10 years, those individuals will be able to have kids. Wow. You know, um, so that's definitely something that individuals have would have to look forward to. And then just all the other medical marvels that, you know, are put in place where that, I don't like the idea of using like pig parts and all that stuff. If I have to get a pig part put into my body, please just let me die. <laughs> <laughs> At least make it the bacon, yeah. okay? The, yeah. the yeah. parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> telling you. Yeah. But, you know, that they're going about using that kind of stuff on, like, the heart, you know, for the valves and all that other craziness to where they actually continue functioning. And the person might be able to add on a couple years to life. Yeah. You know, but all these things that without God, you know, talking to someone and saying, hey, this is possible. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't even be able to interact with that kind right. of stuff now. You know what I mean? That's so yeah, that's so good because like, what, what what if God's using you where you? I mean, not what if God's using you where you're at right now? Exactly. Mm. So you a, a mentor taught uh, taught me this: like, just serve where you're at. Exactly. Wherever you find yourself today, as you're listening, as you're watching, reading, whatever, serve where you're at right now. Serve where your two feet are at, and Man. do it to the best of your ability. Because exactly. that's all you got. Exactly. Do it to the best of your ability. Doesn't matter what it is, like you said. Like we're, we're, earlier, we we're talking about janitor, but if you're a janitor, if you got, if you're a trashman, if you're whatever position you find that you think is unfitting or or not luxurious, you know what I mean. Like do it to the best of your ability. Yeah, 
be and joyous to do it. Do it with a smile, you know. Mm-hmm. And all those things add up to do the it greater sound. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, does, it adds up because you don't know why you're there. Mm-hmm. You Absolutely. really don't know why you're there. Absolutely. You guys don't know why we... I mean, well, you guys know why we came here to record this episode, record this show. I thought I was supposed um, to be naked by now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... Uh, the countdown's yeah. starting, bro. I was waiting. Oh. Yeah. That's um, in the after party. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's the exclusive. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe VIP. if you want to see it. Pay for that content. For- <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's like, where's uh, my OnlyFans account? <laughs> nah, um, it's called JFans. No, nah, man, but uh, you know, going back to <laughs> that quote that I had um, pulled from the Bible earlier, where you know God says, "I know, um, I knew you before um, you were in your mother's womb." Yes, mm-hmm. essentially that goes for even the person that might not even believe in God, right? Mm-hmm. So the things that they're doing, God had already wrote on their heart, uh, put into their mind to be able to go about carrying out, to go about furthering His agenda. It's nobody else's agenda. Right, so you might not want to go to that person that you know they are openly an atheist and such, but if God gave them the mentality to go about being able to do these things, who knows? Maybe you were called to go into that office, and maybe something that you say might be able to turn them over to Christ. Yes, you know what I mean. Yes. So a couple, uh, couple of weeks ago, you mentioned um, George Foreman, right? He said he was a pastor. Oh yeah, man. Right, like that yeah. was that was interesting. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you think about it. If it was just some old other boxer and then all of a sudden came to Jesus yeah. and tries to bring other fighters, yeah. like they'd be like, eh, yeah. but that's George Foreman. Like, he, he's got a grill. Exactly. You, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, he, he's got a grill. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, so he's reached this level of influence and, you know, stature mm-hmm. to the outside world, to the normal world, to everybody else. They know his name. He's famous. And now you've given them this platform, and now he's a he's a leader for Christ. Mm. How much more impactful and useful is he? Because mm-hmm. that's what it am I being useful? Yeah, like God, am I being useful um, with the tools that you've you know, as the tool that you've created me to be? Mm. Am I being useful with the talents and the gifts and the abilities that you've blessed me with? Mm. Dude, so there's a book called um, Unfair Advantages, and it talks about. Um, and Ooh, I like it already. Exactly. So <laughs> it, it really talks toward like the things that we see as a disadvantage, you know, mm. in the initial. So, you know, growing up in the projects, you know, not having food every day, uh, not being able to afford to, you know, get a ride to school, having to walk every single day. And then, you know, the older that you get, uh, the more you can end up doing behind all that stuff. So I was broke. And then, you know, as a result, I knew that I wanted to go about going to college and, you know, owning my own business. Mm. But had you not gone through all that stuff, maybe you wouldn't have those desires to go about doing all that. You know, yes. so the things that we might see as disadvantages end up becoming an unfair advantage. Mm. Mm-hmm. So being born in a foreign country and, you know, having to struggle to be the person that you are today. You know, there are people that want what it is that you have, mm-hmm. you know, but they're looking at what it is that you have as opposed to being able to take advantage of their own unfair advantage, you know? Yeah. Oof. yeah. I've seen that a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the people that were the greatest salesmen or the best in, you know, finances or stocks mm-hmm. or uh, things were needed, pers- th- roles that needed persuasion skills, you know, mm-hmm. they often came from low-income communities exactly you know yeah. which i found fascinating i was like oh exactly. where are you from well I'm from this part what you know what are you exactly. doing look at you now man suit and tie yeah. and yeah. this and that you know because they needed that development in their character exactly. to take them to fight to have the tenacity to have the confidence yeah. to know that oh, this, this guy ain't shit i could i could take this you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly i could you take know? you yeah, know exactly yeah. Yeah. and so yeah. you know it's it's just amazing to see that you're absolutely right yeah, if man. you stop looking at life or the challenges as like a bad thing and rather look at it reframe that in your mind as to this is character development exactly yeah the best stories have the best character development exactly Absolutely. if this guy was just winning his whole life yeah. he was winning when he was a little kid winning in high school you know a QB, star QB, yeah, yeah, yeah. went into college. Like, no adversity at all. Packed with the devil. Yeah. <laughs> would you, yeah, right? Would, would you, would you, would you even like want to watch his movie or like learn exactly. anything about, like, the no. dude's just been winning. Exactly. Like, there is no like character development in it. Exactly. But when you look at the person that God can take who was struggling, mm. yeah. 
who had no identity and all of a sudden has this huge sense of identity and now is doing great things for the kingdom for the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a story that I, I that's a book I like to read. Absolutely. Uh, I, I want to touch on this one because Moses is like really one of my favorite books in the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. Because it talks about how he had this stutter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, he was not good with words and who knows how good he actually looked and such, right? But um as a result of having that speech impediment and such and God using him, he ended up having to go about developing the skill to be able to do exactly what he did not want to do. Mm. And that's what we end up encountering, you know, in the everyday life. We end up having to do the things that we don't necessarily want to do. I don't want to wash my clothes, you know, but I need clean clothes for the work we coming up, so let me go ahead and do it, Mm -hmm. you know. But there's, you know, more tangible skills and such, of course. Um, But we have to do those things to go about being in the position that we want to be in. And if we don't go about doing those things and we're sitting still and then all you're doing is talking about, I hate this place, I really want to leave and such. And Mm -hmm. you're not doing anything to better your situation at that point. You're not taking advantage of your unfair advantages. Right. And you're still, you're there for a reason, mm-hmm. right? You're, if you are in, say, in a workplace, you don't like your job, whatever, like what if, and I don't know for sure, but what if you're still there because someone needs your energy, your spirit, your light, mm. you need to provide them a word or something, yeah. exactly. right? Like, it's kind of like taking a test. Like, how can you pass the test if you haven't, like, how can you move on to the next test if you haven't passed this test? Exactly. Maybe yeah. there's something in this season in life right now that I have to pass, that I have to learn, that I have to take away before I, that it's a tool that I need. Need that experience at the next exactly. level. Exactly, man. You know, I need to acquire this yeah. for the, the next XP. season of life. Absolutely, exactly. yeah. I need to gain some XP. And I yeah. guess that that was the thing about this book, man, because it, it talks about the person that comes from you know Palestine and grew up playing in the dirt, you know, throwing mm-hmm. rocks for fun and such, right? And then it, it talks about also the the kid that grew up in a rich family mm-hmm. and how people you know might look down on them and say you didn't have to you know go through any kind of struggles because your family was able to provide you with everything. Um, but just because you're provided with everything doesn't mean that necessarily you're going to be able to do everything either. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that that might be one of the greatest hindrances because you just expect to have everything handed to you at some point. Uh, but for the individuals that are able to look at that situation, I can really do some good with, you know, the money that I have available to me. Yeah. Um, that's how we end up encountering the people that, you know, build Snapchat and, you know, such. Mm-hmm. Um because oftentimes you do hear about these people that end up making multi-billions and such already having some kind of wealth behind them. Uh, but there was hard work that ends up having to go into that as well. So I think yeah. that we, we can't just discount you know, no, the struggles sure. that any individual goes through. Right. And we have to be able to appreciate what it is that they actually go through. Right. And, and, and I mean, really, they also had to spend time mastering that craft exactly to produce whatever that was mm-hmm. you had to learn it you had to ma- manipulate it and you had to like mess with it break it fix it up yeah. like there's a process to get to that end goal which like you said snapchat or facebook or instagram whatever that social media or or whatever that huge tool that everyone's using today mm-hmm. there needed refinement before that final product could be released to the world just like us yeah. we need refinement before we can do. We can fulfill our calling. Our character needs to be refined. Yeah. Before so we can fight those Goliaths. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need right? to go through the fire. We yeah. need to go tend some sheep. We yep. need to go kill some bears with our bare hands. Yep. You know, to take some lions out. Yep. yep. And then maybe we might have to wait ten years. Yeah. yeah. But we don't like that because we want it now. Yeah. Mm, that's right. We want mm. instant gratification. Man, like another... even even if God said like, "Hey, I'm gonna give you everything you've asked for ten years. You don't have to do anything else. Just wait ten years, mm. dude. That is torment for people. Yeah, yeah man, I believe it. Like, so just imagine the the struggle that Abraham and Sarah were having. Mm. You know, mm. there you go. Yeah, man, where you end up essentially telling your your wife or husband, like, "Yeah, you know, I'm not able to do it for you. Go ahead and you know shack up with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can do it. Take my handmaiden. Yeah, exactly. You know." Just that struggle, because I think that when they finally had their first kid, they were like in their 80s yeah. mm-hmm. or something like that. And mm-hmm. you, you can kind of hear it where Sarah was like, you know, after all these years, it's finally going to be given to me. And she mm-hmm. kind of like laughed about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like, mocked it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and then it actually happens. And it was like, oh, and then, like how? Mm-hmm. God is going to, you know, impregnate me at this old age he's like i stretched before this time <laughs> exactly <laughs> don't change the rules at game time, <laughs> <laughs> at game time. 
Yeah. Always Wrong. get a good stretch. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, but man. seriously, like that's what that's exactly what they did. They changed the rules of game time. Yeah. yeah. God told them, I promise you, yeah. you, Sarah, <clears throat> you, Abraham. Yeah. A, a boy and a great nation will come out of your descendants yeah. right like the like the sands like the granules of sand right yeah. that's what scripture says absolutely and they hard. said uh you know I, I remember god promised you a son i'm too old so it's not gonna happen just do it with her yeah so they tried to they tried to fulfill god's promise in their way mm. uh-huh. don't change the rules at game time let's see exactly <laughs> I think it's, that might be today's um, episode. Don't change rules at game time. Yeah, yeah man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So we've talked about David as a, as a lover a little bit. We talked about David as a, a as a warrior. Do you want to do you want to talk a little bit on as a king and as a friend? That that will be our next. Uh, that'll be a little preview. Okay. For for uh, our next episode in this series, which will be David as the king mm. and a friend, mm-hmm. um, and a friend kind of aligns a little bit more with what people were initially thinking of a lover would be, mm-hmm. uh, and and really the friend is a relationship. Yeah, right. Like, how do you be a king who needs to enforce, who needs to lead, but you can't forget about the relationships mm-hmm. and the individuals? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's such a it's it's a dichotomy. Mm-hmm. Like you need to lead, but you also got to be able you you have to be you know focused on the relationship and build that relationship. But sometimes when you lead, some feelings will get hurt. Mm. But again, that's that that is what I'm really excited for next one because once we cover like today we covered the the warrior and the lover, which you guys did a great job at. Uh, next we'll cover the the king and the friend then after that it'll be around christmas time a couple episodes left we'll have a special christmas episode that we'll talk about but even before that we're we're gonna have a specific tangible actionable episode Mm. because this is take these first couple ones as learning let it digest you know, you might have to listen to these a couple times, which mm. I highly suggest you listen to a lot of them because there's so many gold nuggets. Um, people have told me multiple times they go back and actually listen to it in 15, 20 minute increments because mm-hmm. there's so many gold nuggets and they don't want to miss anything. Mm. And I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so go back and listen. And then by the time we get to the episode, we're like the how to's because we're going to dissect it into three different parts. The, the head, the heart and the hands. Mm. How does a warrior think? What is the warrior identity for your heart? And what does a warrior do with his hands? Mm. And as we break that down, we want to give the listeners a very clear blueprint of what to do next. Mm. Whatever season you find yourself in, whether you're searching, whether you've been on your walk for a little bit and you just need a, you know, some kind of actionable guide, that's what we want to provide for, for all our listeners and viewers. Yeah. Um, I think that might be the perfect time to bring on your buddy, man. For that episode, the actionable, you know, what to do next. Which one? Which buddy? Um, you've been talking about him for a couple of weeks now. Saying that you wanted to get Jesus? on the podcast. Jesus mm. always here. Jesus <laughs> always here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, you said there was somebody else that you wanted to get on. I'm, the is it Sam? Oh, Samuel? I don't know. I don't know if that's what... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's Samuel. He's, um, works with people, helps them out. Maybe. Working there. Maybe we can. Working their demons yeah. out. Well, I know you know our our other buddy David. He's another one that he, he's oh, got yeah. he's got a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. It would be fun for him to be on here too. Yeah, man. So yeah. you know what though, we got some really good takeaways that we can wrap up with. I think yeah. like you know we we covered some really great traits mm-hmm. right that we find in this character David. Yeah, that is very relatable to people today. Yeah, that you can definitely act on. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, be responsible. You know, uh-huh. step yeah. up to the plate. You know, don't shy away from responsibility. Yeah. Um, be humble, right? But know when to stand up for what's right, mm. right? Absolutely. So that that's that's like the lover stepping into the warrior. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yes. And so, in order to be a warrior, you need to have uh, values. You need to have strict lines that no one crosses. You don't go over it. And no one goes over it. 
mm-hmm. to get to you, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so don't change the rules at game time. Don't change the rules at game time, right? Don't change the rules at game time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. If you know what's right and you've been given specific instruction, don't try to go around it. You know, don't try and mess with uh, the rules when you already you're on a you're on a you're on a goal. I think we said this early on is have a mission. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So have a mission. Yeah. And if you don't Absolutely. know what your mission is, read the Bible. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Read the Bible. Yeah, man. Uh, 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 I was I wasn't planning to share this until a little bit later, but I think this would be really helpful for people. Um <clears throat> I think uh, and I was telling you a little bit about this, like this the purpose matrix. Right. And I think I think your purpose comes down to three different things. Uh, something that you're naturally gifted at. People are usually commenting, "Oh, you're really good at this," or "You're really you 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 excel in that," and it doesn't even look like you're trying. Something you actually enjoy doing. Hmm. Something you like are researching all the time. You're reading about. Um, and a side note of enjoyment. Enjoyment doesn't always mean positive. Hmm. What are you willing to endure? Hmm. Just like you going to school, like because but you hate doing the tests. Hmm. That just proves how much you enjoy school Mm -hmm. because you're willing to push through the crappiness of the test Mm -hmm. so the three part the the two parts real quick is something you um something you're talented at you're gifted at naturally something you enjoy doing and that last piece is something that has to do with other people Mm -hmm. because i I believe that god didn't create it create us to be alone Mm -hmm. but and you said this too your gifts aren't for you Mm -hmm. your gifts are meant for somebody else Mm -hmm. there you go so I feel like when you fill in those three gaps, those three pieces of the pyramid of something you're good at naturally, something you enjoy, something you're willing to put up with, and something that has to do with other people. When you're able to fill those in, I feel like you're one step closer to your purpose. Hmm. I think you should share that um, that link that you were talking about earlier, too, with the spiritual gifts. Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll actually, um, for everyone who subscribed to our newsletter, it's just the easiest way to kind of send this type of information out because mm. it just gets um, pushed out every Monday morning at 5 a.m. Central Standard. Mm. So if you guys haven't had a chance yet, make sure you subscribe over, um, over on www.operationredwood.org. And once you go on there, just put in your email and you will be subscribed to the newsletter. You'll get all of our weekly updates um, on our episodes. You'll get the links to all that straight to your email, straight to your inbox. Um, so you don't got to worry about fumbling around with uh, I- iTunes or Spotify or Google Podcasts or wherever you choose to listen. That'll be all on there. And at the same time, um, we will do a little something extra special for you guys where we'll put on... <clears throat> Some of the show notes that we talk about and speedos and speedos, yeah, Brian did some speedos. And make sure, <laughs> make sure you subscribe because we're only gonna show that one time. Paid content, <laughs> paid content. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that'll be a, a great way for us to stay connected with you guys, and at the same time, if there's any questions, any topics, any of you who were ever led to Christ or or, or want to know God more. You know, we're obviously not pastors, but we would love to hear about your story and how the podcast has blessed you and maybe somebody else that you've shared it with. Um, and who knows? Maybe we'll get you on the show and just have an open conversation. And you can share your story. You can share. Yeah, I mean, kingdom. It's good for to to have that the good witness. You know what I mean? It is. You know? It is because there's so many things, that, so many good things that are happening in people's lives, and it's almost like. We will talk to ourselves, we'll talk down to ourselves really, really bad, but we'll, we won't really uplift ourselves, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's something we want to change as well as like how we speak to ourselves in, in, more, in a more positive way. Mm. So if you guys got good stories, if this, this podcast has given you value, if it's blessed you in any way, shape, or form, you know, we would definitely appreciate uh, a rating, a positive rating on, on Apple Podcasts, and um, we'd love to hear from you so we can continue to make this better. And then at the same time, we'll attach that uh, that assessment, that survey, so people can reach into their spiritual gifts and see what see what see what tool God is making you to be. Yeah, there you go. Maybe we should open it up to where they can ask for you know what we discuss next as well. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. That would be really yeah. cool. Absolutely. I mean, we have the gear and tech now mm-hmm. with all these ni- the nice mics and everything. It's real nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can actually do some live streaming. Mm. Where it's like a it's legit a radio show and people can 
pop in, ask us questions, and who knows? I mean, if you guys are local or when we get to that point where we can fly people out and hang out with us yeah. at our uh, eventual studio, yeah. it'll be dope. Yeah, yeah. It'll be real dope. We'll Beverages be real dope. and food are on your own dollar. B-Y-O-B. B-Y-O-B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, B-Y-O-B. And, and, and actually, last last thing, and I'm not trying to make this all like plug everything in there, um, but our apparel line is launched. And launched. Check, check it out. Um, what what we discussed a couple weeks ago is all the proceeds, um, all the profits that come in from this apparel line all the way till the end of the year. We're going to discuss and uh, we're going to send them to, we're going to donate them to organizations that are helping out with um, a lot of this war and this conflict that's going on. Uh, we still have Americans that are in, you know, Israel and, you know, in that area, in the middle of war, uh, we got some good organizations that are that are boots on the ground rescuing American citizens. So we want to do what we can to provide for them, uh, to give them financial backup, give them more resources to take home some more Americans. And in the future, uh, we want to be able to give back to organizations that are also helping locally. Mm. And uh, this is this podcast is just the platform, and who knows where God takes this. But I pray that He continue to use us as it, as He meant it to be, because mm. I believe that we're on to something huge, and this is just this is still just the beginning. His will be done. His will be done. <laughs> Ooh. Whatever that may be. Whatever that may be, and I mean it real this time. I mean, grab your knees, grab your knees, grab your knees. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> So, uh, as always, I appreciate you, gentlemen. Thank you for another awesome, awesome podcast. Like, this is, I, I can't imagine any better way spending Saturday mornings recording these with you guys. Because, like, I always walk away with a new sense of hope and just energy. Absolutely. To Absolutely. carry me through the week until we get to run them back. Yeah. I look forward to this. Awesome. Yeah, Saturday awesome. to Saturday, man. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching, listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Next week. Operation Redwood out. Ooh, there we go. Yeah.